Callie, how you doing? Uh, first of all, what do you love most about Emmy's weekend? Oh, well, I love seeing people have success and all of their art come to fruition because there's a lot of passion in this industry. Tell me a little bit about today's event, this new house uh, gifting suite. What, what do you think about it? Gosh, everybody is so kind and generous and they're all trying to, there, there are things for excellent. There's beautiful products and beautiful libations and I think that everybody is promoting their products and trying to get their businesses out there. So I like that. I'm a promoter of local businesses. A lot of people are local. I like that. And do you like to attend the ceremony or you watch from home? I've done both. I love to watch from home in my pajamas for sure. <laughs> and I can pause it and go grab a glass of milk and come back. <laughs> Absolutely. What about uh, the after parties? Do you go to any of the after parties? I've gone to some after parties and I love to get dressed up, so yes, I like that. Anything that you're rooting for this year? Um, I'm rooting for Couples Christmas Retreat because I'm in it, so <laughs> there's that. That's good. And um, anything else that you're working on coming up? Um, yes, we do have a psychological thriller coming up and I can't talk too much about it, but it's in the works, so. Where can people find you? Um, I, I'm also a private chef, so Chef Callie Cal or just Callie Norton on Instagram. Gordon, how you doing? Uh, for, first of all, um, what do you love most about Emmy's weekend? Uh, you know, it's the community of it. Just for me, I'm a composer and a musician, so I'm mostly home working kind of in solitude. So. Events like this kind of get, get me out of the house, out of the studio. I can come and connect with other creatives and kind of get the feel, you know, for how the community is uh, is um, working together. And, um, and of course, you know, when you're with people that are driven and accomplished, you can get energy out of that, and that's a cool thing, too. And you're a 25-time Grammy nominee. What's the difference between Grammy weekend and Emmy weekend, first of all? Uh, the Grammy thing is a little more concentrated. On, on the Grammy day and the day before, there's a, re a reception like this. Um, and uh, the intensity of the Grammy thing, it's, the, I remember the Emmy Awards that I, where I won, especially, it was more of a, a little bit more relaxed of an environment. The Grammys feel a little more, I don't know, everyone's a little bit charged in a weird way, you know? Um, uh, I guess I was talking to a friend of mine right before I came up here, and they were t they were just nominated for an Emmy last year for some writing co composing they did, and they we set through the ceremony and it went longer and longer. It was a long ceremony, and their category is like the third from the end, and they lost, and they were going. We were like sitting there, and it was just we were just exhausted from the experience of like I think of a lot of us the anticipation of not knowing how it's going to go. And I can a little bit relate to that, because when you're sitting there and you hear the presenter announce the name in your category, time slows down. And like for me, I'm listening for the G in Gordon. And I've been lucky that I've, out of my 25 nominations, I've won four times, which is pretty good, you know. And I hear the guy go, Gord, and you know, and then you realize that, OK, now i got to go up there. And I got to make a speech and I got to do that whole thing, you know. But the truth of it is, it's stuff like this, it's the doing of it, the creating of the art that's the valuable thing. More valuable than carrying a trophy around. It's, it's the people you meet, the experiences you have. I love it. And how do you get to 25 nominations? It's incredible. You know, I don't know. I've, I've been doing it for 23 years. And I think the key is you got to find out what's in here and do that. If you if you find out what you believe in and do that, all of a sudden you, you wake up one day and you've got a body of work. Because I see that 25 number and I have no freaking idea how I got here. Other than I just every day I get up and I write music and I play music and it's a part of my life. I love it. If people want to find out more about you, Gordon, where should they go? Probably GordonGoodwin.com or, you know, Gordon Goodwin on Facebook or the real Gordon Goodwin on Insta, the whole deal, you know. All right, we're here with Jessica Ross. 
Jessica, it's Emmy's weekend. How does it feel to be here at the WOW Gifting Suite? It feels amazing. It's so nice to see so many friends and meet new people. I've known Mark and his swim brother for years. Um, and it's just, it's such a camaraderie. Um, and it's just so nice to feel all this positive energy from everyone. Do you think it feels different than other years now that the, uh, the strikes are over and everyone's back to work? You know, it feels better because I know from going to events after 2020, um, when there was still COVID going on a strike, there was so much uncertainty, but now there's like definitely a beacon of hope. Um, and I think, you know, people are finally looking forward to things, moving forward and just getting back into their life that was kind of like stopped, unfortunately, in 2020. Is there any show that you're looking forward to picking up a win? I hope, actually, we have a show coming out, and so I hope that our show wins an Emmy one day. So that would be incredible. But honestly, some of the shows that I love, because I watch it with my mom all the time, are like the Chicago Fire shows, Chicago Med, and Chicago PD. So I hope that one of them wins, because my mom loves those so shows so much. If they won an Emmy, she'd be and make her day. And what are you working on right now? What's coming up? So I'm working on a few different things. One of them is our sh my show, Hollywood Unexpected, which is now on XOTV. Another project we're working on is this really cool pilot called Chasing Stars. And um, it's a female-led TV show, mockumentary. It's hilarious. It's dramatic. And um, I can't wait to share with everyone. Absolutely. If people want to follow you and find out more, where should they go? You can follow me on Instagram at Jessica Ross Official. Or TikTok, I am Jessica Ross. Here with Kate Linder. Kate, it's Emmy's weekend. What do you look forward to most about this weekend? Well, it's a crazy weekend, and I am honored to be a governor, one of the co-governors of the Performers Peer Group of the Television Academy. So we're very, very busy. We've had all kinds of nominee receptions, and Monday, see, the, see it's crazy because of, the, because of everything going on in the strike, these Emmys were pushed. So these Emmys now are from last year, right? And then there'll be another Emmys, you know, later in the year for 2024. But these are the ones from 2023. So um, it's 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 going to be fun time, and it's the 75th anniversary. It's the 75th anniversary of the Emmys, so it's an exciting time. Absolutely, 75 years. I know it's a little confusing now for some people with the thing and. Um, what, uh, how, how, how great is it to be one of the governors of the, uh, what was it? Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, governor along with Kim Estes were both governors of the Performers Peer Group at the Television Academy. I think, believe there's 31 different peer groups and each peer group has two governors. And so it, it's a huge honor. I was governor before years ago for the daytime programming peer group and now I'm back as for performers all performers. And what advice do you have for the winners and the people who go home empty-handed? Listen, as far as I'm concerned, they're not empty-handed because this is the thing that they should always remember. No matter what, if you're nominated every time, whether you win or lose, every time you're introduced, they will say Emmy nominee. And that is so you know you don't you don't lose as far as I'm concerned. I think they're all winners, and it's an honor to be nominated. I love that message. Uh, if people want to follow you and find out more about you, where should they go? You just go to my website www.katelinder.com. It's all right there. You can just click on it. That's the easiest thing. I'm on on everything. <laughs> Kathy Cola, it's Emmy's weekend. It's great to see you. How are you enjoying this gifting suite? This is one of the best gifting suites. I am having such a great time. Makes you say wow, doesn't it? Wow gifting, that's right. So obviously the awards are coming up. Is there any show that you're looking forward to in particular picking up a win? You know what, I love beef. That was one of my favorites. All around best. So that's the one I'm, I'm rooting for. Uh, I agree, I agree. Beef was fantastic. What are you working on though? Um, I'm working on a lot of stuff. I have this new show that we are in production of. It's called Chasing Stars, female empowerment, comedy, um, like The Office. It's so funny and like Real Housewives kind of combined. So that's what we're working on. I also have Who is Billy Bones? My music documentary is on Amazon Prime right now. So check it out, please. Fantastic. Are you going to be going to the uh, ceremony or just hitting the after parties? What's your plan? We're going to viewing parties and after parties. You know, we, we have to represent, for sure. 
Absolutely. Well, if people want to find out more about your what you're working on and follow you, where should they go? Um, all social media, Kathy Kola, K-A-T-H-Y-K-O-L-L-A. <laughs> all right, I'm here with Kim Estes. It's Emmy's weekend. I saw you carrying around an Emmy. Was that your Emmy? Absolutely. In my Emmy, I, I didn't... Um, uh, take it from anybody as uh, they were walking on the street. It's mine. Uh, it's for Outstanding Actor in a Short Form Series, Comedy or Drama. And what was the series? The series was called Dicks, about two female detectives, and I played their boss. How does it feel to get an Emmy? No feeling like it. It's one of these miraculous things that happen because you are voted on by your peers, and your peers are the ones that select you out of that whole list of people and then they put you on top and so it's it's amazing um i saw that you have it with you here now after emmy's weekend are you going to take it with you say on an airplane or say anywhere else because honestly i would take it everywhere it depends yeah some people uh, you know some of my friends have never seen it they've never held it they um you know, and, it, and it's nice to share. And She likes to travel. So, yeah, I like to take her whenever I can. I'll take her out to lunch. Yeah, I have a lot of fun. To, I've had fun with her. Now that you've won one, yeah. are you hungry for another? Not hungry. If the opportunity comes and I get into a project where I'm either submitted or submit myself to the Academy, then I would gladly go back into the roster of nominees. Gladly. I won't shy away from it. Uh, what are you working on now, or is there anything coming up this year? Or Yeah, um, there's a, a nice little sci-fi uh, feature, uh, a series called My Sister's Maker, uh, done by uh, Akte Obasabi, and um, we'll, see how, we'll see where it goes. All right, well, if people want to follow your career, find out more about you, where should they go? They should go to, well, if you Google me, Kim Estes, it'll pop up, but if you go to SAG Talent, www.sagtalent.com. Everything is there. Then there's Instagram, the Kim Estes, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm around. All right, I'm here with Sham Ibrahim. Sham, how's it feel to be here at the Wild Gifting Suite for Emmys weekend? It's amazing. I feel all the Emmy magic. Everybody's out. There's amazing brands here, and I can't believe it. We're on like the rooftop in Hollywood. It's crazy. Beautiful up here. Listen, you're a reality TV veteran, I'd say. Tell us something that people don't know about reality TV and what goes into making it. I don't think you know what we go through. Like, I think everybody sees it and they're just like, all that happened is what you see on TV. Oh, no. There's so many things that got cut out. There's so many things that, like, happen that nobody hears about that are can be really dramatic, even more dramatic sometimes than what you see on TV. But a lot of times the producers and stuff can't, you know, like they don't, like on this last show I did Catfish, this is all already out in the news because I did open my big mouth. I wasn't supposed to, but there was like a physical altercation between me and, you know, like somebody. You'll have to watch to see, but like, yeah, it, like something like that happened and they cut it out. And I thought, I thought that this would be like the, the you know, like biggest part of the show. I mean, I was, I was glad they did, but you know what I mean? So people don't understand that it's not just what you see on TV. People also don't understand what it takes to get there. Like, there's a process to get on reality TV. It's not easy. You know what I mean? There's an audition process just like everything else. And at the same time, the producers have to be interested. You have to be compelling as a person and have something that you bring to the table. It's not just like you think like reality TV, anybody can do it. No, you kind of have to have a little something to do it. Do you find that the people that you meet when you're shooting the shows are people that you'd actually like to know in real life? It just depends on the show. I mean, honestly, like I'd say, a lot of the people that I've been on shows with are my friends in real life, and some are my real enemies in real life. So, I mean, it translates. Like, what you see on camera tends to translate when the camera's off. Like, those relationships tend to either stay good or stay bad. You know, that's why you see, like, after a season of Housewife might be finished taping, they're still fighting because it's, you know, it's not like, you know, like there's, I, I think there's a misconception too these days that people think it's scripted. It's not. Reality TV is real, but it's produced. It's produced. It's like, like producers will see something happening and go in that direction. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, the, the situations are real, you know? What about reality movies? 
Why don't we make some reality movies and try to get like an Oscar category for those? Guess what? They're called documentaries. And there is such a thing, and there is a category in the Oscars. But if you want to make a documentary about me, I'm down. Let's go. I'm ready. Catfish the movie. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But um, maybe a documentary about, like, something beyond me. I'm not that interesting. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that narcissistic either. And I'm probably not ready yet. But... I do think a documentary about the state of the world right now would be very interesting. Like the state of the world kind of like post-COVID and post like this thing that we all went through that nobody had ever gone through before in our lifetime and just how people are adjusting I think to, back to like life and at the same time, well you can see why I'm not a producer. You can see that I'm just rambling and I have no idea what I'm talking about. You can see why I'm in front of the camera not behind. I like the idea though, it's a good idea. Um, speaking of that, is there anything you got coming up that you'd like to uh, let us know about? Well, I'll say this. If you ever want to see me live in person, you can always catch me at Drag Queen Bingo at the Hood Bar and Pizza in Palm Desert. Um, it's a ways away from Hollywood. I even have a show tonight. After this, I'm going there. So, um, But it's the funnest. You'll never find a more fun bingo. And I'm an artist. I do artwork. So I've given a lot of artwork to big celebrities. You can Google it, like Katy Perry, Snoop Dogg, all this stuff. If you want my art, if you actually like want to own it, the only way you can own it is at my bingo. I don't have a website, I don't have anything. I'm just like not good at that stuff. I'm not good at the internet. So if you want things, you have to come and get them in person and you have to win it at bingo. I love it, we'll do it. Thank you so much, Em. My name's Dante, I'm with Bionic Buzz. Dante, you look like a politician. You could run for president, Dante, just from like, I, I feel like I would vote for you. Just like, just, you know what I mean? You look like a, you really do. Thank you so much. Maybe I'll start a campaign. Thank you. Dante for president. Vincent DePaul, you're an Emmy winner. So first of all, I want to ask you, what do you look forward to most on Emmy's weekend? Uh, what do I look forward to most on Emmy's weekend? Really to reconnect with a lot of my friends, but ultimately, I guess it's this experience with the WOW creations, the Harris brothers, Matt and Mark Harris, bringing people together. Uh, it's always about community. And in this Hollywood land, overlooking the Capitol Records building, it's about uh, everyone being here and supporting each other. Uh, there is so many things that I, I miss uh, being with my community. And with the strike, it's separated some people, but also brought a lot of people together. And I'm so happy that the SAG after strike is over and we're resuming back to work and we're able to continue being creatives. And uh, what I look for during the weekend is really connections and that's it. Now you've won two Emmys yourself. What's it like when you win your first Emmy? How does it feel? Uh, the first Emmy that I won, uh, it was a very emotional time. Uh, it was a very difficult year. Um, but for me, the, the feeling was uh, you were elated, but also you're appreciative that your work that you have done, producing, acting, all the things that you have done, all the labor of love that you have performed is being recognized by the Television Academy and the Television Academy is saying to you and the voters, we celebrate you for excellence. And that is such a great feeling to, to be honored by your peers. What advice would you have for the first time Emmy winners coming up? Because we know there's gonna be at least one. Uh, how to handle it, how to proceed afterwards with your career. The advice that I have for first time Emmy Award winners is always um, be appreciative, be thankful, be humble, and realize that uh, you may empower a next generation to always give back. And, you know, if you're on the ground floor in the elevator, try to push that button to go up, and maybe you can help someone on another floor, and then that person can help someone on another floor, and you can continue to pass it on. And uh, again, I'm so happy. I just produced a Christmas Couples Retreat, and I'm so honored to have shot a film in Maryland where I got to hire actors, writers, cinematographers, grips, handyman, all those people, and I'm so happy to do that and to pass that on. And um, yes, yeah, so that's what it is. I love it. We're looking forward to it. If people want to follow you or find out more about what you're doing, where should they go? Uh, certainly. So they can go to fiveartsfilms.com and also 
to learn more about Christmas Couples Retreat, christmascouplesretreat.com, and my Instagram is vincentdepaul12. Okay, I'm here with Whitney Wegman Wood. Whitney, tell me, how does it feel to be here at this WOW gifting suite, and what do you think about the whole Emmys weekend? Uh, this is amazing. I've really enjoyed myself here. I've gotten to meet a lot of very nice people. I've been introduced to some fantastic products that I'm going to try out and report back on. And in general, I'm loving the Emmys weekend. It's, it's just a lot of fun. <laughs> I love that. Are there any shows that you're pulling for? Or, or Yeah, it's all shows. What am I saying? It's not movies. The Last of Us. I love sci-fi. I love Pedro Pascal. So, The Last of Us. Awesome. Well, what are you working on right now? Ah, so as for me, uh, I currently have a film that's screening in film festivals across the country called The Last Butterflies. Uh, it's also an apocalypse drama, so I think I have a penchant for that. And uh, as a matter of fact, right after this event, I'm going to be heading out to the Borrego Springs Film Festival because we have a screening. That's amazing. Okay. How long of a drive is that? I believe about three to three and a half hours, depending on how much of a lead foot you are. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Well, is there um, anything coming up this year? I know you're working on that. You're going to the, uh, the film festival. Anything else that you're looking forward to in 2024? The year has just started. You know, nothing that I'm like, really like, this is what's on my radar, but I feel like the year is just so open with possibilities. So I'm excited to see what comes of 2024. It feels like, it feels like a year of change. I love it. If people want to follow you or find out more about what you're doing, where should they go? So I'm on all of the social media. Look for at Whitney Wegman Wood. Instagram is where I'm probably most active. And you can also find my film, The Last Butterflies, at The Last Butterflies.